Hi, I'm Arya from Dream Team and Science Olympiad. Today, I'm going to be going over my tennis ball catapult presentation and demonstration. Before we start, let's get into some history facts about tennis ball catapults. Catapults emerged in ancient Greece in 399 BC. Catapults evolved from handheld uh, compound bow devices. The catapult dominated for centuries as a fear-inducing weapon of war. So without no catapult, there's no war. In the mid 20th century, catapults made their way to um, aircraft carriers. In the 21st century, the new technology using aircraft catapults emerged. The elect Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, E-M-A-L-S. What I'm gonna be covering in this presentation is the background on tennis ball catapults, the, uh, the components I used for my project, and the measurements of my catapult to see if it's well within the range, and demonstrating it. The background on tennis ball catapult. I'm gonna be going over four main focuses. The concept behind tennis ball catapults, the definition of a catapult, the role of gravity in air, and how a tennis ball catapult works. The concept behind tennis ball catapult. When the elastic potential energy is released, it turns into kinetic energy, moving energy. The, the, then the gravity eventually pulls the launch object back to the ground. And the distance of the object traveled is determined by the amount of kinetic energy gravity and the resistance by air. The definition of a tennis ball catapult. A catapult is a launching device that allows us to experimentally observe projectile motion. And the catapult is also a mechanism that forcefully propels uh, objects like stones, spears, and other projectiles. The role of gravity and air in the tennis ball catapult. The gravity is the reason the tennis ball is constantly being accelerated. On the other hand, the air forces it to the opposite direction. When the kinetic energy weakens in the air, the gravity takes over and pulls the ball back to the ground. And finally, how it works. A catapult uses the sudden release of stored potential energy to propel its payload. In this case, the tennis ball is the payload and the store en stored energy is in the energy is stored in the spring and the wooden stick. The components I used for uh, to build this tennis ball catapult. I used one inch screws, a rope holder, a tennis ball of course, and a swing bracket. Why I used the swing bracket is to swing the wooden stick. And I used some eye bracket uh, I used a spring, so that's where the storing the potential energy comes in when I pull the wooden stick back. And I used some L brackets. I used a paper cup for the launching it. And I used eight wooden pieces, pieces which are, which are uh, one foot. Now let's go measure the catapult and experience it in real time. Okay, so I'm gonna be measuring the width, the length, and the height. The limit for the width was 40 centimeters. And the limit for the uh, length and height was 50 centimeters. Now let's go measure to see if it's well within the range. First, let's go measure the width. So right here, it shows 32 centimeters. And while the limit was 40 centimeters. So for the width, we're good to go. Now let's go measure the length. So right here, it shows thir 39 centimeters when the max is 50. So for the length, we're also good to go. 
Now let's go measure the height. As you can see right here, it shows 49 centimeters. 49 centimeters. And the um, uh, limit was 50 centimeters. So for the height, we're also good to go. So, so as you can see, for all the three measurements, we were, uh, it was well within the range. So now before we uh, uh, launch and demonstrate, um, let me uh, tell the preview of what I'm, what the preview about my kind of uh, catapult. So in total, I have eight wooden sticks four as the base and um, two horizontal and, uh, and uh, two vertical and one horizontal and another stick for the launching. And I used a spring to store the potential energy, a tennis ball, and I used a cup and I used some um, swing brackets and I used a swing bracket, eye brackets and L brackets. And one more thing. I set a target right there for two meters, and then I set another target for four meters. And I put dirt, and I put uh, mud in the middle, so I wherever the tennis uh, ball lands in between those, um, I'm gonna mark. I'm gonna uh, from the two meter target, I'm gonna uh, put a chip right there, and then I'm gonna mark from where the uh, wooden stick to the chip, and that's how I'm gonna measure the. Like, I mean, measure my, uh, where it lands first. Okay. Now I'm gonna use some salt bags to firm up the base because it was kind of scary. Okay, so I'm gonna be, so again, so uh, when I pull it, storing the potential energy, when I let it go, it turns into kinetic energy. Air forces it to the opposite direction and gravity makes it fall to the ground. Okay. Three, two, one. So it landed from what I saw right here. Right there. Now let's go measure from this wooden stick. So right here, it shows two meters and 52 centimeters. And that was more than two meters, so um, we're good to go. And to see if it's consistent, I'm gonna do it another time. Okay, so let me first grab this tennis ball. Okay, now for the second time, let's do it. really good now let's measure it from right over from here. so right here it shows um, Two, it shows two meters, and it's actually two, uh, no. So it's showing three uh, meters and 170 centimeters. I mean, two meters and 170 centimeters. So for this one, we're also consistent. It's uh, more than two meters. So for both of these, uh, I'm glad it worked out, and thanks for listening, and thanks for your time. Bye.